Hello there Fit Golfers, it's Carolina the Fit Golfer Girl here, back at it again with part number two of my golf club fitting series. So if you have been following me for a while, you know that a couple months ago I went to Club Champion, which is one of the largest retailers and fitters in the country, and I got a full bag fitting. That means that I got fitted for a driver, woods, irons, wedges, putter, literally every club in my bag. I already shared the first part of my fitting, which is the irons part with you guys in a previous YouTube video. So click the link above or the link in the description to check it out. Make sure to leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. But today I'm actually going to be doing my driver and woods fitting. So I'm going to put you guys through the entire process, try to explain to you the numbers behind the decisions and why I ended up picking what I picked. I mean, I didn't really pick it. The numbers did. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit. But anyways, before we get started, guys, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Please share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and it helps me continue to make good, awesome videos for you guys. So let's get started. Okay. All right, guys, so I'm here at Club Champion and I want you all to meet Lorraine, she's going to be fitting me today. So Lorraine, how long have you been doing this for? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I have actually been fitting for about 16 years. Wow. I started out part-time at a retail store and found that I had just a knack for it. I enjoyed it and I took a leap of faith probably about 10, 12 years ago, full-time into the industry and I have never looked back. I love the whole concept. I have always believed that we fit a swing. Everybody's swing is individualized. Um, it's based on body size, shape, tape, physical limitations, etc. So everybody's going to swing a little bit differently. So just off the rack stock stuff is not going to fit everybody. Love it. So before we get started with this fitting, I want to tell you guys a little bit more about my current situation with my woods. Both my driver and my fairway woods have been gifts. They have not been designed for me. I was literally given the, the clubs and I started using them. I have been going back and forth an F8 from Cobra and a G400 from Ping, both with different shafts for almost three years now. And if you have been following me on Instagram, you know that my driver is my absolute nemesis. I am super inconsistent off the tee. And I feel that if I am able to dial my misses down a little bit, I'm going to improve significantly. This is why I'm super excited to share this portion of the fitting with you guys, because I think that this is where I am going to be able to benefit the most. All right, let's get started. Just like any other fitting, we're going to start by establishing some baseline numbers using my current driver. Right here I am using a Cobra F8 head with an Aldilla 60 gram regular shaft. I believe that this shaft is half an inch shorter than standard and I was not fitted for this club. This was actually a gift and I've been using it ever since. So I'm really curious to look at the numbers and see why this club has been so inconsistent and what we can do to change that. Here are the numbers that I got from my original driver. For your reference, these numbers are the average of however many shots I hit with that particular club. We have some numbers such as club speed, attack angle, club path, face angle, and face to path that are determined by my swing, and Lorraine is not going to be changing those. Everything else she should be able to affect one way or another using the right shaft and the right club head. So now that we have some baseline numbers that we can use to compare to the new shaft and club head combinations, it is time to find the right shaft. And this is where the knowledge of your fitter comes in really handy because based on your swing and the numbers that they just analyzed, they're going to try to find a shaft profile that they believe is close to what you need. And from there, you're going to test about five or six shafts that are close to that with different weights, maybe different stiffness, until you find the right one for you based on the numbers on the track map. Now, just so you know, I am currently using a Cobra F9 head, which is the closest thing to my current F8. Now let's take a look at the numbers between my old driver and a driver using a shaft that is much closer to what I ideally need. As you guys can see, the differences and improvements are huge. Both my club speed, ball speed and carry improve significantly. Also, my spin rate is much closer to the ideal 2500-ish that we want to see with the driver. 
when Lorraine said to me that 2500 in the spin rate is what we're looking for, I realized that the word spin rate gets thrown a lot around in the golf circles, but I was a little unsure what it actually meant. So I asked her to explain it to me in a little more detail. Why does spin matter? What does spin mean? The spin is what the ball is doing. So if you've got too much spin on it, the ball can either go left, right, or just drop right out of the sky. Got it. And what is an ideal speed or like, you know, a, a spin number that... Spin we're generally looking about that on average around that 2,500. Sometimes with a little bit slower swing, we'll see it a little bit higher. Even with a higher swing speed, we might see it. Also depends on attack angle too. Attack angle will affect spin too. Got it, and I see that my attack angle actually changed quite a bit from 3.3 to 3.8. That's not significant. You're still coming up on the ball, but it allows you to come up a little bit more. Got it. Which, ironically, because it wasn't a high spin, you didn't balloon the ball. So what was happening with yours, you were ballooning it, so you lost distance. Well, that is a lot more distance. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, that's nice. I'll take those extra yards. Mm -hmm. And most importantly for me, look at the dispersion. So much mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I need to hit those fairways. You know that they're the death of me. <laughs> All right, next up. All right. After looking at those initial numbers, my fitter Lorraine now knows that we are headed in the right direction with the shaft that she initially picked for me. So we're going to stay in that realm, but now it is time to try a few other shafts with different weights, different technologies, different manufacturers that are similar to the first one that I tried. Like always, we're going to gather data and gather numbers, and at the end, we're gonna take a look at those numbers, and we're going to start eliminating the shafts until we are left with the one that is better for my golf swing. Right, and that's what we want. We want something that's gonna work with your swing, whether it's a good swing or a bad swing. Yeah. Um, I need forgiveness. Yeah, of it's I need love. That's amazing. This one's cute, it's purple. It's one of my favorite color, baby. <laughs> All right, so what do we got here? What is it? A 62 low spin? I don't know. I'm making stuff up. 65. 65, so a little heavier. Now I'm going to look at wall speed, mm -hmm. smash factor, I'm looking at your club head speed too. Okay, so. Just looking at club head speed, my original club was 89. Every other shaft went up a lot. All right. What else are we looking at? Looking at carry. Okay, so carry, that number. They're all very competitive, I would say. All right. This is, was the 50 gram one, so I'm going to eliminate that because obviously your ball speed dropped on that. Okay, so. That's goodbye. Yep. Now we're going to start eliminating carry, um, height. So we don't want it to be too high. Correct. My original driver is super high. Right. That's what we... <laughs> Excuse me. I want to call it the garden hoops effect. Okay. We want to water the back of the garden. Love it. So, obviously... You're hitting yours very high, mm -hmm. spinning it, and it's just dropping. Yep. The other wow, the spin is crazy. It's three, five, two, eight. Everything else is in the twos. Mm -hmm. And the carry is very low. Which I could also get a little bit lower with the club head, too. Got it. So we're just looking at shafts now. Correct. Everything could change with the right head. Mm-hmm. Get, get dialed in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But then we're looking at dispersion. Yeah. My favorite here. I like that a lot. So that goes. Oh, that's my original, and that's the right one. That's like an extra 20 yards. Is that the purple one? That is the purple. That's the purple shot. It's shopping. on average 14 yards more in carry. Wow, that's a 24 lot. 24 yards in total distance. I mean, I always say that I would give up 20 yards to hit it straighter, but if I could hit it straighter and gain 20 yards, I wouldn't be too upset. Yeah, that it would make me quite happy too. Thank you. That was nice. <laughs> All right, so we got a winner. So we got a winner. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this shaft and we're going to try some heads in. All right, let's do it. So now that we have the correct shaft for my swing, we have to find the right head. 
Well, the process of selecting the right head is very similar to what you just saw with the shaft. What we're gonna do is that we're going to try different heads from different manufacturers using the winning shaft. We're gonna gather some data, gather some numbers, and at the end, we are going to compare them and start eliminating them until we're left with the best possible choice for my golf swing. I get to try Mizuno, Titleist, TaylorMade, Callaway, and Pink Driver heads. We gather data with those clubs, and then we also made any necessary club face adjustments or loft adjustments as Lorraine so necessary. And we gather data for those too. So now let's take a look at the numbers. Let's take a look at the heads. All right, that's a big dispersion. And you know, that goes to show you, I am very, very inconsistent with my driver. As you can clearly see here, it is uh, obvious. Um, so we are going to try to basically set myself up with the equipment that is going to minimize that inconsistency. Correct. So I'm still not gonna be hitting all the fairways, but hopefully we can get a club that's gonna help me hit more. At this point, Lorraine is going to start looking at the smash factor, dispersion, and spin of these club heads, and then any other numbers that are affected by these numbers, and she's going to start eliminating them until we find the correct club head for the shaft that we already selected. That's a tight list. So the tight list and the F9, you hit both of them very straight. Let's see, so you got the red and the green-ish. That's nice. So and the that's thing that I don't like about the TS3 is your spin numbers jump back up again. Got it. So what does that mean? That I am somehow hitting it a little straight, so it's a, it could be a little more consistent if I don't swing right. And also, uh, my distance is lower, probably because of the spin. Yep. Swing speed. My... Your smash factor was a little bit lower, so you weren't hitting it as center. Got it. As you did. So I mean, gonna... it seems like it's the the F9. We're gonna go back and try that one more time. All right, let's do it. So now let's talk about my new driver. Guys, I can tell you for a fact that I felt the difference between the two drivers right away. It felt really, really different. So as you guys saw, the numbers in my old driver revealed that that driver was not the right driver for me. And it was actually making my mistakes worse. That is literally the worst thing that could happen. Ideally, you want a club that is going to make your good shots better and then it's going to make your bad shots not so bad. My club was doing the exact opposite. And uh, that was probably one of the reasons that I was so inconsistent of the tee with that club. However, once we switched the shaft, just by switching the shaft, I felt a big, big difference. The way that the club moved and the club head moved and the way that I could feel it during my golf swing was very different. This is very hard to explain, guys, because it's very feel oriented, but I can tell you that I felt more in control. I felt that my wrists weren't going all over the place. Oftentimes, whenever I'm at the top of my backswing, I like don't know where to go. I feel like the club just kind of goes all over the place. But with the correct shaft and eventually the correct head, I was able to just kind of find like the momentum, just like find the rhythm and find the smoothness that you see in the really, really good golfers. So big difference. I'm really excited to get this driver and try it out of the golf course and see how it's going to affect my driving averages, which I hope are gonna get better. I'm super, super excited because I feel like this could really have a big impact in my golf game more than really anything else. So that's the end of my driver fitting, but don't go anywhere because the Fairway Woods fitting is coming up and this is really, really interesting because that's when fatigue starts to kick in and I want you guys to see the importance of having the correct shaft whenever this happens. This could be the difference between you completely losing it after hole 14 or keeping it together and finishing strong by having the correct shaft that is going to give you maximum forgiveness whenever your swing just starts to get a little sloppy because you get tired. Hey, it happens to literally all of us. The fitting process for a three wood is very similar to all the other fitting processes we've seen. So the first step is going to be to gather some baseline numbers using my current wood, which is a tailor-made rocket ball with a mature flex shaft. This was also a gift I did not get fit for this club. 
The next step is going to be to find the right shaft. And we're gonna do that by using a newer tailor-made head, which is the closest thing to what I currently have. And then we're gonna start testing different shafts. Like always, we're gonna gather some data and then we're gonna compare it so that we can start eliminating the different shafts until we find the one that's ideal for my swing. Okay, so now three woods, baby. All right, let's look at that dispersion. What is that yellow? Probably the rogue blue. Okay, so rogue blue is a no. The villain is a no. The villain went left. And I hit it really well, so. So now we got, which one's my original one? What color? The red. This red one. Okay. So we are in between the purple and the last one I hit, the gray. <laughs> I apologize for the terrible descriptions of the shafts, but. So you know okay. what, give me one more on that one. All right, one more, here we go. This particular shaft was my favorite in terms of feel and also Lorraine's favorite in terms of the numbers. However, as you can see, my miss is consistently left. But it's also worth mentioning that my miss was consistently left with every single shaft that I tried. That means that we're going to stick with this shaft, but we're going to make necessary adjustments to the club head to offset for that miss left. All right, so as you guys can see, my miss was left. Pretty consistently left with both of the shafts that I kind of liked, um, especially when I got tired. Uh, so assuming that I'm going to be getting tired, let's say towards the end of a round, we want to make sure that I hit it consistently. Exactly. I, wanna, I want you to be able to ultimately hit a club the same way on 17 and 18 as the way you do on one and two. That, that would be great, hopefully straight. <laughs> so we have that same tailor-made wood, but Lorraine just put it in and set it up to a little bit of a fade to offset my my shot club base at effect. And as you can see, once Lorraine adjusted the head to offset my left miss, all of the balls were going straight and I was still getting that really awesome feel that I liked from the shaft to begin with. Our next step is going to be to find the right head. We already know that whatever head I pick needs to be adjusted to a fade. Unfortunately, not all fairway woods can be adjusted, and that kind of leaves us with two possible choices, the tailor-made that I already tried or the Titleist that I'm hitting right now. Once we gather some numbers with this Titleist, we can take a look, compare, and then we're gonna have a winning combination. All right, so the TS3 that's tailor-made. Actually, no, the tailor-made is so slightly better. So why do you say that? Well, swing speed is a little slower, yeah. but... Ball speed's a little higher. Uh -huh. Translated to about the same distance, but better smash factor. I definitely did feel like I hit the tailor-made better. Hit the tailor-made a little bit higher. So that's where you lost a little bit of distance. Got it. But, I mean, how? What, what was the distance? 214? Mm -hmm. Which is about what I'm hitting it right now. Correct. Except that I'm hitting it straight more consistent, so I'll take that any day. Once we determined that the gray shaft and the tailor-made head were the perfect combination for me, I went back and I hit a couple shots. Now what happens here is super interesting because this is towards the end of my fitting and I've already hit a lot of balls. I personally don't feel physically tired, but the numbers on the screen are showing that my numbers are getting a little sloppy. My swing is getting a little inconsistent my swing speed is going down and i think this is something that happens to golfers all over the world towards the end of the round they're getting fatigued even though they don't feel it and then all of a sudden their game starts to suffer this is why it's so important to have the correct clubs because the correct clubs are going to allow you to continue to play minimizing your mistakes but the incorrect clubs are probably going to make those mistakes worse and are not going to let you finish your round strong and that's it for today guys i hope that you enjoyed this video if you haven't yet please go check out my irons fitting video that video is super 
helpful, it is super informative, and it really goes deep into the process and what it takes to get fitted for clubs. A lot more information there that I didn't include here, so please go check it out. Click the video over here or in the description. You guys will find it. Definitely go check it out. Also, please guys give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Give me any suggestions for future videos or give me any feedback regarding how I can make these videos better in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video with a friend. It really helps me out and it helps me continue to make good videos for you guys. Now, if you want to be my client and train with me, check out fitgolfergirl.com slash train with me and if you have any questions just send me an email at fitgolfergirl at gmail.com and i hope to see you guys very very soon with another golf fitting video but this time with the putter this one's really really interesting really really interesting because it's literally all science so see you guys soon Mwah.